Arrows, Will Skeet said. He was standing at the wood's edge beside a pile of sheaves unloaded from a wagon, but suddenly paused. Good God. He was staring at Thomas. Looks like a rat got your hair. He frowned. Suits you, though. You look grown up at long last. Arrows, he said again. Don't waste them. He tossed the sheaves one by one to the archers. It looks like a lot, but most of you godforsaken lepers have never been in a proper battle, and battles swallow arrows like hoes swallowed. Good morning, Father Hub. You'll spare me a sheaf, Will? Don't waste it on sinners, Father, Will said, throwing a bundle to the priest. Kill some God-fearing Frenchmen. There's no such thing, Will. They're all the spawn of Satan. Thomas emptied a sheaf into his arrow bag and tucked another into his belt. He had a pair of bow cords in his helmet, safe from the rain that threatened. A smith had come to the archer's encampment and had hammered the nicks from their swords, axes, knives and bill hooks, then sharpened the blades with his stones. The smith, who had been wandering the army, said the king had ridden north to look for a battlefield, but he himself reckoned the French would not come that day. It's a lot of sweat for nothing, he had grumbled as he smoothed a stone down Thomas's sword. This is French work he said, peering at the long blade. From Caen. You could sell this for a penny or two. The praise was grudging. Good steel. Old, of course, but good. Now, with their arrows replenished, the archers placed their belongings into a wagon that would join the rest of the army's baggage, and one man, who was sick in his belly, would guard it through the day, while a second invalid would stand sentry on the archer's horses. Will Skeet ordered the wagon away, then cast an eye over his assembled archers. The bastards are coming, he growled. If not today, then tomorrow. And there are more of them than there are of us. And they ain't hungry, and they've all got boots, and they think their shit smells of roses because they're bloody Frenchmen. But they die just like anyone else. Shoot their horses, and you'll live to see sundown. And remember, they ain't got proper archers, so they're going to lose. It ain't difficult to understand. Keep your heads, aim at the horses, don't waste shafts, and listen for orders. Let's go, boys. They waded the shallow river, one of the many bands of archers who emerged from the trees to file into the village of Crecy, where knights were pacing up and down, then stamping their feet and calling on squires or pages to tighten a strap or loosen a buckle to make their armor comfortable. Bunches of horses tied bridle to bridle were being led to the back of the hill where, with the army's women, children and baggage, they would stay inside a ring of wagons. The Prince of Wales, armoured from the waist down, was eating a green apple beside the church, and he nodded distractedly when Skeet's men respectfully pulled off their helmets. There was no sign of Jeanette, and Thomas wondered if she had fled on her own, then decided he did not care. Eleanor walked beside him. She touched his arrow bag. Do you have enough arrows? Depends how many Frenchmen come, Thomas said. How many Englishmen are there? Rumour said the army had 8,000 men now, half of the marchers, and Thomas reckoned that was probably about right. He gave that figure to Eleanor, who frowned. And how many Frenchmen? She asked. The good Lord knows, Thomas said, but he reckoned it had to be far more than 8,000. A lot more. But he could do nothing about that now, and so he tried to forget the disparity in numbers as the archers climbed towards the windmill. They crossed the crest to see the long forward slope, and for an instant Thomas had the impression that a great fair was just beginning. Gaudy flags dotted the hill, and bands of men wandered between them, and all it needed was some dancing bears and a few jugglers, and it would have looked just like the Dorchester Fair. Will Skeet had stopped to search for the Earl of Northampton's banner, then spotted it on the right of the slope straight down from the mill. He led the men down, and a man-at-arms showed them the sticks marking the spot where the archers would fight. And the Earl wants horse pits dug, the man-at-arms said. You heard him, Will Skeet shouted. Get digging! Eleanor helped Thomas make the pits. The soil was thick, and they used knives to loosen the earth that they scooped out with their hands.